Welcome back to Movie On. Today I'm going to explain the movie called Black Roads from 2018. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care, and I hope you enjoy it. The movie begins with Harley being questioned by the police officer. The policeman asks why he killed her from so close when he could do that from a distance. Harley, in extreme fear, stares at him for some time, and the scene fades to two years back. Harley drives back Jody from school. When he reaches inside the house, he asks Misty for Amber. She says that she's going out on a date, and that he would be mad hearing this, but Misty is old enough to take care of Jody. He knocks Amber's door and shouts at him, saying that she was supposed to take care of the children tonight. Amber replies that Misty is 12 already, and she can babysit. She further says that she's just jealous of her life because she has things to do, and he just has to work. He sits with Misty and Jody at the dinner table at night, when he asks why Jody isn't eating. She says she can't eat the hot dogs since they're cut into pieces, and asks Misty to glue them together or else she won't eat it. Harley gives her his own. She asks Harley if he wants to listen to his fortune. Harley insists that he has to work, so he'd do it tomorrow. Jody forcefully tells him his fortune and says, you are the master of every situation. She hands the piece of paper to him. In the next scene, Harley sees Callie at the store he works at. She greets him and asks if he's fine about his sisters. She tells him that Esme, her daughter, wants Jody to join them for dinner, so he shall write a note to the bus driver for Monday's different route. She leaves him staring at her for a long time. At night, Harley gets to his bed when he hears something. He takes his gun and goes towards the living room where he finds Amber moaning heavily, and she was making out with a guy on the sofa. Harley goes outside and starts firing, and when the person leaves, Amber shouts at Harley. She expresses her hate for him. Jody and Misty witness the entire scenario from the window of the living room. Harley takes the sofa they were having sex on outside and burns it completely. In the next scene, while driving Jody home, she asks a question to Harley. She asks, what is lethal injection, as mom is going to get one? Harley confirms she's not getting one. Jody asks if mom's going to die, and Harley says she won't. Jody replies that she doesn't want her to die even if she killed daddy. Harley scolds her and makes her shut up. She then tells him a joke to make the surrounding better. Later, Jody and Harley were sitting at the police station when their mom arrives with one of the cops. Jody hugs her mom and she says to Harley that she thought she wouldn't see him again. He gets tears in his eyes when his mother says he looks different. His mom asks if he's wearing his father's coat, while Jody says he wears it all the time. She cries and asks about Misty, when Harley says he can't bring them both as they fight in the car. Jody confirms if she wants to know about Amber, when her mother says that she knows she's a big girl and must have plans. Jody replies that she's started dating. Harley cuts her off saying, define dating. His mother stares at him and asks what has gotten into him. Tears roll down his face and he says to his mother that she wanted to be her and falls off the chair. The cops take his screaming mother inside. The next scene begins with Harley sitting with a woman named Betty. Betty says that if he doesn't want Amber to take care of the girls, he can't have any relatives when he confirms he doesn't have any. She asks about Uncle Mike. She says that alcohol can never be a solution to his problems. She further asks him about his mother and if she wants to see him again. He feels reluctant. Betty asks why does he think that his mother is more concerned about the girls than him. He replies that they are girls, that's why. Betty says that it doesn't matter. He replies that girls can get pregnant and boys can get away from it. When Betty interrupts and asks what if he makes a girl pregnant. He replies that he'll marry her. She further asks what if he doesn't love her. Harley says that if he's having sex with her, why wouldn't he love her? She further adds a question and makes him confused. Betty asks Harley if he loves his father. Harley says that he did everything he could do, so he supposes. When Betty adds, even including beating children, Harley says that he doesn't want to talk about it anymore. Betty says that the session isn't done yet, but he leaves. In the next scene, Harley goes to pick up Jody from Esme's. Esme's mom takes him in and offers him for a pork chop and a beer. They sit together at the dinner table when Harley asks her about Esme's name, as it sounds weird. She tells him that she named her Esme after an impressionist. She brings the book and makes him look at her when he sees another. He says that he recognizes him from his mother's hand notes. At night, Harley enters his kitchen and finds Amber pushed towards a counter. He sees her wearing his shirt and asks her to take it off. Amber unbuttons the shirt and immediately moves towards him and stops him because Jody and Misty are having dinner at the table. She says that she needs a license, 
when he says that he can't afford it. Amber says that he'd never be able to do anything for them. Misty says that Esme's mother dropped him a present. Amber interrupts, saying that she doesn't make sense at times. She needs to see what suits her age. Harley asks what did she bring, when Misty says that she dropped an art book from Chicago. Amber asks Harley if he wants to make up with a girl, and he refuses since he doesn't seem interested. But Amber insists, saying that the girl is into him. He asks her her age, and she replies she's 16. He leaves the table immediately. In the next scene at the store where Harley works, Esme comes there. She finds her way towards him and tells him that she dropped by his house last weekend, leaving something for him. He replies that Amber told him. They chat about one of the impressionists when Esme says to him that he's very interesting. She then whispers and leaves him to continue his work. Later, Harley comes out of his door greeting Uncle Mike and Jody follows him. She runs towards him and Uncle Mike says that she's his favorite girl. He lifts her up and gives her the candy bar he brought for her. Uncle Mike suggests buying a new couch when Harley says he's planning to do so. He tells him what he needs to do to renovate his house. Amber comes out too and greets him. She stares at Harley in extreme anger. Uncle Mike hands Harley over an album when Harley and Amber exchange an inside joke. Uncle Mike takes the album back when Harley assures that they're kidding. Mike sits inside the car and says that most of the people are jealous of him, so they kid it out, and leaves. He gets offended of what they both did to him. Amber asks Harley who needs him, and Harley replies that he needs him. Harley lies on the ground facing himself up to the sky, and Amber joins him. At night, Harley hears some voices coming from outside. Heavily breathing, Harley gets up from his bed and takes his gun. He calls out for Callie. Callie comes out and holds him as he's so out of his senses. She follows him and asks what he's up to, but he remains quiet. Harley reaches a place where he pulls off his pants and inserts his dick inside her. He cries heavily when Callie says that it's okay. In the morning, Harley gets up with a wound around his lips. He washes his face by the river and starts walking back home. He hears a gunshot and finds Misty in the backyard. He asks her what she's doing with his gun when she says that she's trying to kill a rabbit. Harley orders her to leave his gun and she's not allowed to use it. She's not that age, but she insists that she is 12 already and that she started shooting at the age of eight with her father. She walks home with Harley. Harley finds Jody having something in her hand. She says that it's Misty's shirt and that she found it in the woods. The next scene starts with Harley going into the store when he finds Esme with two kids. He takes his groceries and helps her with placing it in the car. Callie turns to him and says that she's sorry for how she left last night. It was great, but maybe it shouldn't have happened. Harley looks into her eyes and says it's okay, when Callie says that she's a mother of two and married, and also that she is ten years older than him. Harley says that he has nothing to do about it, he just thinks about her, her ass, all the time. The children start screaming from inside the car when Callie informs him she's home alone as her husband is out of town. He assures her that he'll be there at night. He steps back inside when his boss says that someone has complained about his services. He asks him to be better and forget about the things that are disturbing him so he can focus on his work. At night, Callie takes Harley inside the house and offers him a beer. She asks him what happened last night that made him do it. He says nothing is fine at home. Callie asks for help when Harley says that she could just fuck him one more time. That would totally help. Callie grabs him by his face and kisses him, and they continue their foreplay. In the morning, Callie wakes him up so he can leave for work. Harley stands outside his house when Amber calls him from the front. She asks where he was all night when they had a crisis. He asks if the girls are fine. He asks about his gun when Amber assures it's not that big a deal. But she found a thousand dollars in Misty's room. Harley goes to her room and asks for the money she has in her hand. She refuses, saying that it's mommy's, and she saved them up to leave daddy and take us with her. Amber snatches the money from her and leaves her crying. Amber says that it would now be easier to get herself a license while Harley takes the money and leaves. He reaches to Callie's house and asks her why didn't she call him. She says that her husband was at home and she couldn't. Harley kisses her and takes her inside immediately. He fucks her up once again with his might. While leaving, she hands over a note that Jody wrote to Esme. He asks when can he see her again, and she says Wednesday. Harley opens a note that reads, Misty killed a kitten, wins. In the next scene, under the red lights, Callie asks Harley if she was the first woman he ever had sex with. Harley nods. 
She apologizes that she didn't know, otherwise she would have made it memorable. Both of them kiss. She adds that they could do this every Wednesday. Callie's husband calls her by her name, but doesn't find her around. In the next scene, Harley asks Betty if it's fine for a kid to think it's okay to get hit. But for a sexually abused one, Betty asks him if he's talking about Misty. He investigates what does she know about her. She replies that the sessions she had with her, she feels like Misty didn't have a healthy relationship with her father. Betty asks who was sexually abused. He stares at the window and says no one was. She confirms about Amber when he says that she never had a good relationship with him. He said that she was hit by her father and he wanted to help, so he got hit himself. Betty asks if Amber liked that, but Harley leaves her room unanswered. Harley reaches home and finds Amber leaving with a man. Harley stops her, but she refuses. She screams at her and leaves. Jody cries a lot in his arms, but he consoles her that she would be back soon. He promises her to get Amber back. At night, he sits with Jody in her room. Jody says that it's all because of Misty, as she told something to Amber and made her leave. Harley asks what was all that about, but she says that she couldn't hear anything but his name a number of times, and that Misty doesn't tell her things, as she says she can't keep secrets. But Jody confirms that she can keep secrets. Harley asks about it, but Jody refuses, saying they're secrets. Harley asks about the shirt she had in her hand that morning. Why was there blood on it? Jody says that it's Daddy's blood. Harley says, but Misty was at the mall when Daddy was shot. Jody confirms that Mommy dropped Misty after Dad was shot, and when she came back home, she hurried her shirt in the woods. In the next scene, Harley goes to meet his mother. She asks how the girls are, and he taunts as if she doesn't know. His mother scolds him for what he's become. He has stopped taking care of himself. He says that he's done with her girls, and that she needs to take care of them as it's her job. She replies that she's celled up in a locker, so she isn't able to do so, when he replies that you're not celled up here, you just want to be here. He further says that he knows Misty killed Daddy. His mom says that she didn't kill him on purpose. She was trying to kill her out of jealousy, but Daddy got shot. In the next scene, he finds Amber back home. Amber confirms that she's back temporarily. She just had a fight with her boyfriend. He advises her to leave him, as he's not a good guy, but she refuses to accept. Harley goes to Callie's house late at night and calls her out in the car. She comes and asks why he's here at this time when her husband is at home. Harley asks where she was all these days. She says that she should just maintain a level of friendship for now. She calls him at home on Wednesday and leaves the car. The next morning, Amber comes to Harley's store and tells that she's leaving. Harley stops her a number of times as he doesn't like Jody to stay back home with Misty. Amber decides to stop and take her stuff out of her boyfriend's car. The next day, Harley finds Amber screaming at him, as he did not do right what he did with Esme all this time. In the next scene, Harley cries with Betty and tells him that he felt very uncomfortable having Amber at his side last night. Betty assures him that Amber feels safe around him, and that might be the reason she came towards him last night. The next morning, Misty tells Harley that she heard Amber and him fighting. She then adds that she and him are different from other people, and says that mom and dad didn't care about them. Harley says that they did care, but she says dad didn't love her like the way he loved mom. Harley tries to convince her that there's a difference between these two loves. He says that he knows she killed daddy. Misty gets up and replies that he would have done it long ago. Harley recalls that he has to meet Callie since it's Wednesday night. He leaves for her house and finds her dead body. He sees Amber standing at the back with a gun in her hand. She says that she didn't know what else to do because if she was alive, he wouldn't have taken care of her. The scene fades back to the first scene, where the police officer further asks Harley why did he kill Callie, when they both loved each other. Harley says that he wanted her to leave her husband for him, and she refused, so he killed her. The police officer deep down knows that Harley is covering up for someone. He can't kill anyone because he cares a lot for each and every one connected to him. But Harley's comments cause him to be locked up in jail for years. Betty meets him one day and says that she can help him come out, as she knows that he wasn't the one who killed her but he refuses, and the movie ends. To watch more explanations of these kinds of movies, click on the videos on your screen. And don't forget to let me know how you feel about today's video in the comments down below. And at last I will say, stay safe, stay well, thanks.